Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about a book series I'm in the middle of. So I'm going to call this The Journey So Far and I'm going to be looking at Suzanne Dannard's The Witchland series which at this moment consists of four books with the fifth book coming out next year February 2021. To give a rough introduction to the series, it starts with Truth Witch, where we meet Safi and Isult. And Safi is a Truth Witch who can tell, whose magic can tell when someone is lying or not. And Isult, who is a Thread Witch, who can see the thread, the different threads that bind people together and what exactly those bindings are. So they manage to mess up this heist and come under the scrutiny of a blood witch named Agewin. He's he's important because he's clearly in a later series. Before they can run away, escape the city, Safi has to go to a ball where it is announced that, spoilers, she is going to be the Emperor's bride. Well, her uncle, who she's been living with, managed to manages to get her out of there and she and Isult escape the city and are headed towards some free city or some free continent and they're doing it with the help from a wind witch, Merrick Nihar, who also happens to be the Prince of New Brevna. The, the story is continued in Wind Witch and that story follows Merrick after he and the company split up. Safi and Isult even go their separate way. Safi goes with Vanas, Vaness, who is the Iron Witch and is also an empress of some landmass I can't remember. Isult ends up actually going with Aedwin of all people and Merrick heads home to Nebrevna where he is trying to take down his sister Vivia who is a Tide Witch and is also the heir apparent to Nebrevna. You come to find out that things are not what they seem. A lot of this this series has to do with uncovering secrets. Things you think are the way they are are not. And that's especially apparent in Blood Witch, but I'll get to that. So, and then Wind Witch, the Ness is trying to to be a trying to step up as the eventual ruler of New Brevna, but she has a very hard time doing it because one, she is a woman in what is still inherently a patriarchal society even though women are the rulers of New Brevna. And her trying to help her people, she's trying to find uh, a hidden city to help house some of the refugees. You know, the plot continues. Sight Witch is a bit, it's a novella that is a prequel. It happens before Truth Witch. But for whatever reason, Dennard wants you to read it in between Wind Witch and Blood Witch. Sight Witch follows the story of Cullen and Ryber. Ryber is not your usual Sight Witch. She doesn't have the usual gift of sight that the other Sight Witches do. It's how she and Cullen meet and how she comes to, into her powers. Because you are not born a Sight Witch, you kind of, I don't know if inherits the right word, but you eventually gain Sight Witch powers. And then Blood Witch follows more of Aedwin and we learn a lot about his backstory and we follow him in Isult because Aedwin gets hurt in this book and he can't recover like he has been in the past. We also get some more of, of Safi and Vanessa's story. We get a lot more of Vivia because she thinks she's going to be able to step into her role as the eventual ruler of New Brevna but she, her father, who was sick comes back and takes her almost starts taking over her her ruler you know her responsibilities again so she's got that to fight against Merrick also comes under the Merrick becomes basically a puppet of the puppeteer who we first met in truth witch but really started to learn about in wind witch and she is a void witch she's a weaver witch and she can control people because she snaps their their threads but she keeps control of them, and hence why she's called the puppeteer. So Merrick is a basically more or less a puppet of the puppeteer. We learn more about plots and why Safi's uncle did what he did, which is not what we think it was. You know, we think people who are good are now bad. I like this series because it shifts the narrative of these people are strictly good. These people are strictly bad. The people we thought in Truth Witch were good end up actually being bad people in Blood Witch. The reasoning behind something is not as cut and dry as we have thought. 
there's a lot of character development. I mean, it's a good plot book. I will say that this is kind of a character series, but it really does have a strong plot throughout. This is why I like, really enjoy this series and why I'm excited for Witch Shadow, which comes out next year, which will follow Isult. We're getting closer to the understanding of the Kaharawin, which is a pair of witches in the past, a mythological pair, who used to be the kind of balancing force in the world, and they haven't been seen for 500 years, I think. And there's just, there's a lot of nuances to this book series, which I enjoy. A lot of things, you know, didn't think about come back to play in, in later books. So I definitely recommend giving this a try and look forward to Susan Dennard's next in this series. Again, Witch Shadow coming out February 2021. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope you got something from it. I hope you check this series out. It's a really good series. Like I reread it and I very rarely reread something. But if you've if you've heard my earlier complaints, Wind Witch, the audiobook is is bad. Like don't don't read the don't listen to the audiobooks for this. It's not unless she changed it for Blood Witch. Just don't do it because the narrator is just not good. This week I'm going to give a shout out to Chanel at Chanel Time. I am a recent subscriber to hers and I haven't gotten too deep into her vault of videos, but what I've seen so far, she's quite, quite funny, very open to looking at books and judging them, but also being fair about it. I think that's, that's important to note. And then a black owned business I'd like to, to shout out to is Laddie Mae Cosmetics. I have not gotten anything from them, but I have met the owner, sweet, sweet guy. He is a fellow Scat alum, so I have to give some shout out to Scat alums. We, but his his products look really good. I'm really curious to try the mango butter since I have, as an adult, come into an aloe allergy. So I really want to try that mango butter and some of his facial serums. Those look good too. Those are my two shout outs for this week. I hope y'all enjoyed. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on this series. If you are interested in it or if you didn't like it, what you didn't like about it. And I will see y'all in the next video.